Man, I can't believe it. No, I can't. I can't believe it. I, I don't know what affects performance and everything like that. I, I'm still learning this stuff, but <clears throat> yeah, I got on like I guess four minutes late, and uh, Streamlabs right after I, I went live, Streamlabs made an error and it crashed, and it, it has just come up. Let, let's let's uh, you know, almost fifty minutes it takes it. Uh, to restart and I, I want to I want to check it out it goes up to uh, the resources that it's pulling it goes up to saying it needs eight gigs of memory <laughs> right right now OBS has got almost five and Streamlabs only has 440 megs right significant drop all right, but what was different about, um, well, yesterday, if you was following, I, I hooked up with Traintastic, <clears throat> and we was streaming together. I was streaming him, his uh, phone game over Discord. It wasn't coming through that great. I don't think his phone reception was good. But he, he introduced me to, to three different games. A truck game, I can't remember the name of it. I'm going to have to find out today what it was. Looked pretty cool. Um, but Cart Rider Drift, Cart Rider, um, which I do, I have put it on the baby's phone. And it's, it's kind of cool. Gets me a little nauseous. Right. But the other thing, it was supposed to be a phone game was cross bout cross nappy cross tip cross talk cross walk <laughs> cross off <laughs> no I, yeah i think i think the name of it was cross out And it also made me a little bit nauseous. <laughs> uh, but good graphics. But not, I mean, it's not as punchy, y you know. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they got some better sound engineers or something like that. But uh, uh, Macarena, I, I, don't, I don't know. It, it, you really get more. I mean, I'm driving around in this cross talk, cross off, cross walk, cross out, whatever it is. And I'm firing my guns and stuff, machine guns on the roof of my truck. And it, it's just something that's not, yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> Look pretty good, though. But what is the point of all that? Well, the thing is, is I ran, I ran, installed it on Steam. All right, this morning, all right, I, you know, I was done with it and I turned it off and everything. Um, oh man, it's walking dead. Is he up in here? Yeah, he waiting for a team. Wait a minute. He about to go into battle. Hold on. Uh, team match. Oh, no, 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 no. Sam. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, yeah, but back to Steam.
Man, the Steam has something like seven, eight gigs. It's not doing nothing. And when you say it's not doing nothing, it means it's doing something. <laughs> Needs them eight gigs. What you got in there? Interpol, the Kremlin, everybody else. The Trump Tower Hotel business is monitoring my computer in case I might have a lead on how they can get their casino back. No. Oh. I'm supposed to switch to two versus two. Um, I gotta wait for the man. Well, okay, let, let me see. View pending result. Okay. Maybe I can go in here. The bracket. Uh. Ooh. <laughs> that's the first time that's happened in a while. And I think it's putting the dang. Neymar on the Zephyr is what did it. And he is not tricked out as much as he could be. But, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Man, that is beautiful. That's what I just wanted the most, the highest. Uh, love it. What's the name? What's saying I should not uh, spend those fortune vaults? I guess when they're topped out, I should save them to spend because I'm not getting anything else, right? Once I get the 400 uh, coin, I should stop. Right, that's what the guy's saying. It's not worth it. It's an accolade challenge, and I'm supposed to have guided weapons. Okay, so I know what that means. Um... It means this dang shotgun. I'm so tired of that. <laughs> what is this? There we go. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Let me get up in here. But I'm going to try. Okay. Uh. I got no deathmatch tickets. I can't believe it. Oh, Lord. Okay. Merciful Minerva is from Nivlim. Hopping Hera, a postcard from Nivlim. Suffering Zeus from the great Nivlim. Who the heck is Nivlim? Only one way to find out.
Please don't kill me. Oh, no, no, no. What's her doing up here? Oh, no, 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 Oh no, no, no. Oh no. Oh. Ah. Uh. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, provincial? Why you wanna do die so quick like that when I'm just coming down? Child? Oh. Dang you! To unlock. <laughs> oh man, what is this? Is somebody coming right over my head? Help. Lord. <laughs> Turkey? That's it. Zap him. Wish I could pop him up there. I froze him, but ain't nobody up there. Desperation. He was too far. To find out, I must quickly change into my woman wonder costume and go to Coney Island. Right, and I shall stay with your sweetheart. It's, it's got on 3D glasses. Wrong. Okay.
draw this girl. Man. I'm gonna step on that guy quick with a dang zephyr. I'm wide open. A right nose. Kill this guy! Kill him! Oh well. Uh, kill him! Kill him! Walking dead! Kill him! Kill him! Unload! Unload! I want to see! I want to see! Oh, dang you! Okay, so I know what his behind has got. That did not sound good. Thought I saw his tire flying through there. <laughs> This launcher, boy, child, and a Zephyr, too. Get back. Get thee behind me, Satan. Psst. Over time. Oh, I don't like you over here. There we go. That tip that balance. Oh no. Don't die, Walking Dead. Hang on. Oh, dang you. <laughs> Don't shoot my Walking Dead. Draw. <sighs> oh, 
Oh, you mad, Charlie's girl? Child? I'm sorry. <laughs> you trying to sell some cookies? Is that what it was? It's a misunderstanding. <laughs> oh, you think you got me, child? And lob slobbing over here. Man, I do not like that. Oh. Look at that, got a nice. Oh, what is that? This launchers? <clears throat> mm. Mm. That's what called me, called the assistant. I'm gonna change my name to assistant. <laughs> I need to call my assistant. <laughs> can I provide some? Can I be of assistance? <laughs> All right, it's time to get the ten minutes on. Suck a draw here.
Mo. Man, walking dead, get under cover, bro. You about to mm. Mm. Getting too bold there, man. Think I'm playing? The cat is behind my mom and I'm trying to come out onto the keyboard. <laughs> oh no.
Call in the assistant. Secretary, call my assistant. Hey, 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 Barry Beast, when did you, okay, man, I had that covered up with my dang, man, I hate that, Barry Beast, are you still there? Yeah, we're friends, man, I, I, I really, uh, I'm sorry, I've, I've missed, it. oh, wait a second, okay, I need to drop out, because my, uh, my, my fighting partner, Barry Beast, Yeah, we're friends. Kidding me?
I keep saying I need to change this keyboard. Okay, I'll go for a control point clash with Guardian. Uh, Where's the two versus two? I think he did. Yeah, he did. I'm gonna try to cover you, man, with some heals. Well, how fat lot of good that did. What is these guys? What has he got? A dang missile rack 16? I cannot withstand that. Good riddance. <laughs> Help, he said. Shoot, child. <laughs> Here come. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Man, child. Keep wide open. That guy's got a missile rack 16, man. Look out. And here come with it, too.
Mm. I'm trying to play better. Yeah. It takes a long time to actually get skilled at this. I almost hit leave team. I don't even know why I did that. Are you just on your smartphone? Is that is that what it is? Oh no, I lost a guy. I don't want to play with bots this morning. I need my 10% if you know what I mean. Man, don't I have a free crate up here in the shop? I sure do. And it's got deathmatch tickets. And I need this. I sure do. But now, don't forget to check them blueprints, man. You need them. I could beef up my long arm 10 as well. Oh, yeah, bunch of deathmatch tickets. Two more items, and I get my 200 acorns. But it's not gonna be till tomorrow. This is the Yeah, I try to see when people message me, um, but I always mess up, you know, screwing up. See if Walking Dead is back. He is not back. Man, I'm going for the get ready, bro. I'm going to go in here and try to kick some butt. Oh, 808? Man, I got a bunch of credits. I'm almost to get my brick house. That's what I'm planning to get. I cannot get a new mag, man. I cannot. I'm, I'm about to get a brick house. I've been saving this. But <clears throat> you mean the Sentinel or which one? I don't know. Because I, I can't even touch them uh, as far as I try to earn as many. Well, I'm using like a strategy of building up my support mech, so I'm working everything that I do onto the... I say that. I just screwed up. Hold on. Ooh, I hate this place. Shaka Khan, let me tell you what I want to do. I want to love you, want to hug you, want to squeeze. There you go. With your dang Zephyr, your dang $75 thing. Oh, don't kill me. Oh, jumped on me, man. That's so mean. That's bully right now. But I, I'm sort of proud that I took out of him. 
bro. Close quarters. <laughs> That's okay. Shot me in the back. Oh man, he got too many guns. That's ridiculous, man. I don't have that kind of firepower. Jerk. But I would love to take you out right now. And I don't mean on a date. See, I, I threw everything I had at him. Cannot withstand that. Come on again, Mar Weezy. Get your tired ass robot. Here come Mar Weezy again. Mar Weezy. Got his sirs too. What neck? What neck? What mech do you mean? The 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 one with the I I, I haven't been keeping track because I've been working on the like I said. And a guy came on the stream and he's like, "Man, you your configuration. Let me help you, man." And he changed my stuff around and it, I've been doing a lot better. <clears throat> on my my main account, um, he was like, "No, put put Neymar Jr. on." Um, He's like, put Torchlight on the Ares and put Neymar Jr. on your um, Zephyr. Man, it really made a difference. <laughs> uh -huh. Shout. Very botesque of you. Appreciate it. Oh, I like that too. That's a real person. That's not even a bot. But acting like a bot. Opie? Opie. Chukwala. Chukwala. Okay. Please focus over there, Opie. Oh, Opie is mad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you pay a lot for that robot? I'm sorry. I broke it. No, I really am sorry. People are upset. I'm sorry. Geppetto. Geppetto. Oh, yeah. Stop shooting at me when I'm trying to shoot you. Come on. Give me a break here, child. What is it? Oh, no. Here you go. Here you go. Boy, is it Benny? Don't kill me. Oh. Geppetto. Geppetto. Come on, give me 10. Oh, Lord. Here he come. And he looking at me, too. Like he mad or something. Mm -mm -mm. Come on. 
got me from behind. Let's see. Uh, what do I want? Oh, I'm supposed to use this. Oh, no. Oh, did you notice me back here? Oh, please stay back. Please, please have mercy on the child. Mercy, mercy. Mercy, 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 Hold on, let, let, let me see if I can go look at this uh, thing you're talking about. I need to check out the new robot. <sighs> Can't get no more daily objectives. 20 pilot daily objectives. Let's see. 808,505. Man, I'm close. I need to go in with the guided weapons more. I don't see where to see it, man. Where do I look? Which event? Which achievement place? Location on screen. I don't know. All right. Um... can't move. It's one of those things.
Here he comes, man. The winner. Now let's get played the winner. The winner, don't kill me, the winner. The winner. Oh no. Oh. Don't make me the loser. <sighs> The winner gonna make me the loser. Oh yeah, there you go. Huh. Please, the winner. Here come the winner. They gonna make me the loser. <laughs> Please, no, yeah. Mm. Situational awareness is what you need. It's a bot down there. I don't know. I'm worried about the winner. Come on, give me my 10. Six seconds. One second. MVP. Three Smackdowns. If you click the icon to the line. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna go check it out. Oh, this, uh, you know, no, I thought this was a place that I didn't like, but it's actually the place I like the best. I get turned around. Here comes the winner. Man, that was awesome. Right here, bro. The winner. Hey, God. Who was that? Wendy? Did I say your name wrong? Oh no. Alright, Creepazoid. Don't be creeping around me. The winner. You better. Ooh, you better stay away. Here come the winner again. Winner.
Where he at? I'm about to die. Foolishness is what I have. <clears throat> what is this guy? Missile rack eight. I need to do this thing. Okay, see when I'm tripping, I'm, I can't, okay. So. I have seen the Sentinel. There was an event and, and I had to fight in a bunch of two versus two against the Sentinel and it was not easy. But the eclipse, is that what you mean? I wish I could find that guy. There was a guy that I don't. I don't. Barry Beast. I, I may have. T I, I, I ran a rave on this, but there was one guy, and people were in chat and they were like, "Ooh, ah, you know, how did you get that hanger?" And the, the guy had all the kick butt robots, and he had 16s. It was all ranked up to the max. Right? <laughs> had all the top pilots and stuff like that. And some people were making comments about, you just pay to win. And it's like, y'all just say that we pay to win because y'all broke. You bunch of bums. Ain't got no money. I didn't spend but $27,000. <laughs> and I thought to myself, man, anybody that can design a game where your customer, the person that plays the game is your customer, right? can spend $27,000 and be having a good time and loving it and spending more money. <laughs> That's a genius, man. <laughs> good customer service. I really believe they must have it. Yeah, but, um, it's hard to please somebody that spends that kind of money. People say we're paid to win. Y'all just all say that because you're a bunch of bums. <laughs> you ain't got no money. <laughs> Unlike some people that can buy anything that they want as many times as they want without stay or delay. Maybe the winner will go away. <laughs> There should be a, a machine gun toggle for all right I'm screwing up now uh, here we go. please don't let me be nuclearized and vaporized but I type you die stupid bot at 90 degrees to my Gun side. Oh, 
Almost kill me again, because I'm stupid. Survive a little bit longer. <laughs> Come on, Juan. Nobody can touch that. Juan, Juan Reda. Man, get away from me. Why don't you go mess with somebody else, child? Pop you, pop you. Maybe I can learn how to play better. But I mean, what am I going to do against that? Zing it, zing it.
no, 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 Hey, hey, man, uh, Anchor, how do you say your name, Anchor Gaur? <laughs> uh, Ankur, Ankur Gaur, man, you're the one, man, that's, you're responsible, um, that Zephyr configuration, I went and I bought the, um, the next best thing that, uh, what is that girl's name, Nova, the missile uh, 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 pilot, and I, I try to sort of configure her like the Neymar Jr. on my on my daughter's account, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. It works. <laughs> I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to be uh, uh yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be a little bit better. I don't know if you saw that Guardian, the guy Zingy T was the the you know making the rounds just wiping the board with everybody and pinned me down there and I just the only chance I had was to run <laughs> and I ran away and I turned around and got him <laughs> those who fight and run away <laughs> may live to fight another day yeah so I ain't scared of being scared <laughs> I was scared man get me the hell out of here please don't kill me Oh no. Can you? No, 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 no. Help. Ah! Lady and Trout? How you doing? <laughs> it's Bongo. Oh no. The fierce of Dr. Fakler. Please. Have mercy on me. Say my EMP. <laughs> She's a bad banana gun. Oh. oh no, help. No, stop, stop, please, don't kill me. No, 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 please, 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 please. Oh. Bongo. Phew. I don't know if I ever told you the story, but, but you know, when I was little, it was like we had to, everybody had to go to Vietnam, right? So little boys, you know, they were always saying, uh, you gotta, you know, get ready to go to Vietnam and stuff and go out and play army. We would go out in the woods or, you know, the neighborhood or whatever. These days, I don't think you get away with that. But we'd go out with BB guns, pellet guns. Play, uh, play army. Got in me. Um. And we were not not supposed to, uh, <clears throat> you know, point the BB guns and pellet guns at each other's foreheads or at each other, you know. But the way you played army is you would shoot near the person like you would be in your little uh, foxhole or whatever. And if somebody showed up, you got the drop on them, you would just pop a BB right next to them, you know. And when it hit the grass, they had to lay down and count to 100 while you went and hid somewhere else. And man, I was patient. I just... I did not... I didn't go looking for people. Um, I just hid in my little... Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. Uh... 
<laughs> I, and I always tell the story, you know, one time this guy, Al Rosser, he was coming up this hill and it was a big cut of where they put those high tension power lines, those big towers. And it was, it was at a time when they had just cut down all the trees and everything and put in all those power line towers and it was just red clay. And I was way on the opposite side of the ravine, you know, just up in the, in a little stand of pine trees. And I had built me a little, you know, shield or whatever. And I was wearing a, a helmet liner. We didn't have, you know, real army helmets, but we had liners. We had helmet liners. And I was up there in my fatigues with my, my little rifle, my daisy. Right. And here come Al up the hill, man. I mean, he couldn't see, he didn't have the patience, right? I would go somewhere and I would I don't care how long it takes. <laughs> I would wait till the enemy come looking for me. Um and he come up that, that hill and it's like all this red dry red dry dirt, right? So I'm like, pop, and I I pop behind them. And it looks really cool. It makes a red thing of smoke with a BB hit. But he didn't see it. He just kept going. Okay, I tried the thing of using this one. A little bit scary. Yeah, that's a little bit of a different... That was handy having that reloaded. Okay, I'm trying to do what you said. Um, but yeah, Al coming up the hill and I popped behind him. He didn't see it and he kept coming. And I popped next to him. He didn't see it and he kept coming. <laughs> and I was like, let me just, uh, let me just pop one BB down in front of him. He's sure to see that. I popped that BB down in front of him. He grabbed his shin. Man, that BB bounced right off the dirt and hit him right in the shin. I want to tell you, man, I've never seen a, pilot, a pellet gun fire so fast, man. He just opened up on me. And pellets were hitting my helmet lighter. <laughs> pating, pating. <laughs> yeah, he saw right where it came from, too. Ouch. Be my... I, I know I didn't need to unload too, but I just didn't want to take any chances. I need to work on that though. That's a good skill. Man, I got 14. And just making that one change, you said. Yeah, save the ammunition. It, do, it does work, though. That's what you need. Teamwork, man. Skills. Hmm. Yeah, I, I was like, man, he keeps not seeing these little BBs, you know, and then I pop one down in front of him, and that thing ricocheted right off the ground and hit him right smack down in the shin. At least it slowed down a little bit. Uh, I think free for alls are funny a lot of times, <laughs> and I, I, I'm kind of, you know, um, uh, I, I have lost it, but on, on my on my stream somewhere way back when the free for all first came out, they had long ass free for alls, <laughs> and you could wide through your whole 
over and over again like three times get everything blown up like three or four times <laughs> and I thought it was funny as hell <laughs> and then watching the chat and people cursing and stuff and all that <laughs> and that's the thing man you gotta man laughing at people it's it's bad for them when they're upset it really it really causes brain damage when somebody gets really mad and you're like very very hilarious like you you just laughing so hard that you cannot even shut up that that's harmful to the person that you're laughing at, at in reality that's how these these school shootings and stuff happen it's like that what what is that that guy that he put on some eyeliner or something on Halloween and they said he was gay or whatever and they kept messing and he came back and killed like 19 kids and that it's like the first step is they laughed at him the second step is he got mad as hell and then it started a cycle and the madder he got the funnier it was and it damn well is funny but man in real life man you got you got to think about the person's mind right what's happening if their adrenaline is getting going or whatever, it's 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 like cutting off the blood circulation to the the front of their brain. It literally draws when when you get adrenaline, your heart rate goes up. It draws blood circulation from your higher brain, right? That's why a better you can see. And I've I've seen some of these big game tournaments where people are playing these hardcore shooters, and the winners and stuff like that. Man, they're just sitting there. Their heart rate is not changing, they're, and they're just. You need your higher brain to really, you know, be effective or whatever in, in playing these games. Uh, oh yeah, but I, I don't, you know, it's like, it, it. It's like Chomsky says they are hell bent to go off a cliff. I mean, the people that making all the, I mean, even my niece, she got a divorce now from the guy. But but here's the situation. Uh, my niece uh, married a guy. His wife fooled around on him. Her boyfriend ran off from her. They both had kids, right? They got married. I thought it was going to be a good thing. He lost everything in the Great Recession. You know, they're like gung ho, Bush, Iraq. You know, blah 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 blah. But, you know, they they burn all this uh, money in this big Iraq invasion, and all the just regular folks get cut, 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 right? And when the regular folks get cut, 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 what happens? Well, her husband, the guy that had his wife fooled around on him, he owned nothing but a bunch of these uh, LA Fitness or something, it's some kind of big workout gyms or whatever. He was rolling in cash, man, and he was just like, nothing can touch me, I'm a millionaire. Okay, that recession hit, man. All the regular folks ain't going to the gym anymore. That's right, man. And it, it, it put him out of business. He started drinking and just, she was like, I'm going to have to leave you, man, because you, you're just like folding up, right? He lost absolutely everything on a stupid ass recession precipitated by that stupid uh, dang invasion of, of Iraq, defenseless country supposed to be a threat. Iraq couldn't even beat Iran. <laughs> Jeez, man. Okay, so what happened? He ended up working at a pawn shop and he started wheeling and dealing with the guns and stuff like that. Next thing you know, he had his own pawn shop. Next thing you know, he was a gun dealer, right? Next thing you know, whew, he made another huge big fortune. They moved down to Florida. They had a big house. They had all this stuff, you know, like that. And it's all like, uh, uh, what was it? How did they ride to, it was like, Obama's going to take your guns away buy my guns now right i mean that that was the thing it's like obama's he number one in the dang buying guns in pakistan the drone strike and killing and stuff like that but and you know he's like i don't know he's like showing out for the ruling class he's like yeah i may be black but i will kill just as many uh color people in the third world as as uh, as any white man will <laughs> You know, and, and and but my point is, is is they were buying into the propaganda. They really believed it, right? They were like, "Oh my God, our whole business will be destroyed by Obama. Is going to take all the way out." And you know, nothing happened. And they were in Florida, and and I don't know. I mean, he could have been made over a million dollars during that whole thing, just selling. Because everybody's like, "We got to sell." 
we got to buy guns and bury them. You know, people are burying all the guns and hiding them because Obama's going to come take the guns away. Really? <laughs> oh. So we in it now. I mean, I don't know how to get out of this mess, really. I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. The, uh, um, <laughs> Um, uh, you, you take uh, Israel for for example. I, I mean, I Israel, as far as on the the world market, their credit is like really, really, really low because they're so militarized, and and they're essentially the United States uh, kind of pressures it. Chomsky, Noam Chomsky says the United States basically tells Israel what to do, and I feel like well, you can only tell them so much because they're a thermonuclear armed state. They've, they've got thermonuclear weapons. You better not push them too far. But they sure did. Uh, it's like the the Rohingya stuff uh, in Burma or whatever. The United States is like trying to say we're not on a global campaign against Islam. So they kind of had Israel go in to fight all that Rohingya nonsense. Uh, um, as a proxy and Israel ended up getting forced into Guatemala that's probably before your time or whatever but Israel had to go in as a proxy for the United States because there were so many bad uh, atrocities going on in Latin America they were like we, we don't want to call attention to us so we'll have Israel going in to Guatemala uh, to, to take out the people that we don't like okay let's see Yeah, I, I know. Well, I mean, it depends on your definition of, of necessary. Because those that crowd or whatever, if you look at the history, they kept failing at the oil business, right? They kept, fa the guy, Arbusto was the Bush oil thing. And the thing about it is, is by doing the Iraq thing, the, the uncertainty on the oil market allowed him and his crew to make unprecedented billions. Just because of the uncertainty, the oil prices shot up, they made up billions of dollars and stuff like that. At, at whose expense? The whole dang world expense. But, okay. Um, yeah, he seems a bit senility and stuff. But, I, I mean, I have seen situations where Biden is like... Uh, He's confronted with uh, some activist that says something about a world issue. And he's just like oblivious. It's like he really sincerely doesn't know. Doesn't know. It's like he gets people around. And this is a thing that happened in ancient China. It's called the palace eunuchs, right? It's like we have, we can have a president that's surrounded by all these, these, these advisors, right? Well, these advisors, what if they're in bed? What if they're in bed with all these uh, various businesses that stand to gain or lose by a certain policy? They tell the president what's going on. They tell the president what to think. It's just like in ancient China when a, a dynasty collapsed as a result of the palace eunuchs. The palace eunuchs tell the emperor what reality is, and then the emperor gives them a command, and they execute it, and all their cronies gain right the guy Singman Re that MacArthur against American uh, po policy or whatever um, we had Americans here that were like this Singman Re is a maniac right <laughs> he's crazy do not put him back into Korea and MacArthur flew him in there on a military plane and the first thing that he did is he killed hundreds and hundreds of thousands of patriotic Koreans <laughs> starved them to death Right. Don't. Uh, yeah. Don't take my word for it. L look it up. And the reason was, is he got billions of dollars in aid from the United States and he wanted to consolidate his power. Right. So he needed to give all this money to his cronies. Well, that was the food for all the conscripts, the Korean conscripts who were supposed to fight this big Korean war. And as a, as a strategist, Sing Min Rhee is like, what is special about all these conscripts? Well, they're patriotic Koreans. They think about stuff. They have political ideals. They want uh various things for Korea and the future of Korea. 
uh, and that's not their business. They need to be dead. So strategically, it was a brilliant decision. Reed took all the money. He paid off all his generals to consolidate his own power, killed the, uh, the hell out of his own people through starvation, right? When the North Koreans were, were uh, uh, moving uh, to a defensive posture, and then he let all the, the world power, see, he saw that the, he, the power of these other imperial states need to be ground down right by sacrificing his own people making south korea vulnerable right <laughs> he was able to suck in all these un troops and just grind them in a hamburger down there right and at the same time reduce the north but anyway that's a everybody and i you know i'm sorry to get off the game topic but one of the reasons i like to be here is, is like encourage people to read books and learn about what's going on because man we're about to be in a desperate uh, situation with economic disaster uh, yeah um, I my impression of Joe Biden is is, is is that thing of the palace eunuchs right that he looks around him and it's like oh you've got money I'll listen to you why does the guy that have money have money somebody paying him well maybe that person wants you to think something that is going to benefit him personally, right? Because I, you, if I've just seen, and I don't waste time with with people like uh, to study. Well, I mean, um, Trump, he just kind of incoherent, like a, a like amphetamine. Uh, you know, where he he's just talking, and he's so hopped up on that. Um, amphetamines that that he's just talking nonsense he's not even there you know and so he's a very frightening and scary person brain damaged kind of person you know like a, a, a hitler wannabe right but then uh biden is just like man he doesn't know anything that's real going on he thinks he's trying to be good and stuff like that but he's ill-informed you know uh, uh one of the big things facing uh, the United States is the fact that we built up so many uh, nuclear weapons development facilities and right now man at Hanford Washington they got a half a trillion an estimated half a trillion cleanup cost from nuclear weapons production of the Cold War this has been a war that's been over for, <laughs> for half a century right <laughs> almost and it's a huge environmental disaster I, you know uh and the negotiations, they estimate it's going to be a half a trillion dollars, right? You're looking at a situation where that stuff could explode and catch on fire. Huge poisonous cloud of radioactive toxicity going over the country. And what could they do? They just say, well, as a legacy of the Cold War of all these people that were dead that had all these wrong policies or whatever, there's been an explosion in a fire and a toxic uh, waste cloud is now spreading over the United States. Flee. That's all they can do, just run. <laughs> um, and people are not aware of it, man. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. My wife, you know, uh, one, one thing, the utilities are so high, and I distill water. They were like, man, you know, my parents, my, my daughter's godparents are here in the house. And they're scared of the tap water, right? I distill it, right? And I put it in the plastic containers. They constantly buy giant jugs. I'm like, I've been talking to both of them. I was like, we need to stop using plastic, right? And they're like, you're crazy, man. And I, I just, uh, uh, another thing my wife would do is all the top, very top shelves is, is, uh, Anything that's in her way in the kitchen, right? She would cram it way in the back of the very top shelves off in the kitchen. So what I did to counter that is I, I just distilled water and I filled all those cabinets full of jugs of distilled water. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking about turning them into those crack key farming things or whatever. It's like you cover up the jug and you drain out a little bit of water in the top. You put your plant into the thing and you cover it like with something something black and the plant just grows 
crack key or something. And I was thinking of, uh, of, of making those and selling them, like growing a big, nice plant in each one and, uh, and selling it and then encouraging people to repurpose their plastics like that for, uh, I forget what kind of, it's a certain, it's like crack key or crock key uh, farming or whatever like that. But it's like you take a plastic container and it, cover it up where it's something black. And then you put a gap of airspace and then you put your plant down in there and there's some roots in there that are exposed to the air, right? And then the rest of the roots are down in the water and the plant will grow really vigorously. And I, I haven't done it, but I'm planning to start doing it. It's like take your cardboard and uh, and wrap your, your, your jugs or whatever and make this crop key farming thing and grow plants in there. And it, you know, the, it, it cleans up the air. There's all kind of plants you can grow in the house that cleans up the air. And it, everybody needs to change their life and just, cr you know, grow living things and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me see. I, I got to find this thing. Uh, I don't know if I can find it. I got these dang uh, little things set up here. Uh, shape the changing man. I think it's Mad Magazine number 168. Is that the one? I don't know what's happening. It's not showing it. But there's a Mad Magazine about the energy crisis. And it's like, yeah, we could turn the garbage into bricks. But uh, they, they make fun of it, you know, it's like, uh, imagine what it would be like and stuff like that. But, but uh, I think it's Mad Magazine and the energy crisis, if you look up that, it's, it's a funny as hell. Uh, but there's some of these plastic manufacturing uh, startups for, uh, uh, that, that like they, they do some kind of thing for matching funds. Like if you want to do something, uh, uh, with uh i'm glad we're talking about this man it's close to my heart uh if you want to do something they'll help like with plastic they can help you start to build the uh the machinery uh to make stuff out of your plastic now um my observation is you go to a museum I've been in a museum where I've seen like a wood carving, just a beautiful wood carving, right? A thousand years old, right? A thousand years old. And it's sitting up there. Think of, of this. You carve something out of wood, <laughs> just beautiful, right? A thousand years later, people are paying every day, paying money to go in a museum and look at it. <laughs> right now if you look at decomposing wood and how much decomposing wood is putting as much carbon into the atmosphere as all the automotive right we need to stop that so my thing and what i did is i bought like a, a milling machine and i want to make these wood uh plaques with uh carvings carvings on them with the the milling machine uh, and, and try to make something really beautiful that somebody would want to keep and preserve. And, it, you know, uh, in a time like a thousand years ago, when you had some period of real hot culture where, it, where somebody could carve all that beautiful wood or whatever, like most of that is all gone. It did decompose. But it was done so beautifully that it took a long time and there's still some of it left, right? And, and that's what we want. We don't want wood right now. You know, you go in construction and all that concrete forms and everything that they build like that, a lot of that wood, they just throw it right in the landfill. And it rots. And that CO2 goes right into the atmosphere, just like exhaust fumes. It's messed up. Ah. Yeah, it's some... Um, and uh, right now, this generation, I, I know personally firsthand, I was in China for seven years, 
and a lot of right now Chinese people are like we we hate that ancient shit you know but the the thing is is like they used to uh, uh, have a education system where you had to learn so much ancient shit that, that poor people that had to work could never get anywhere right so they had a revolution and stuff and they changed all that and but the quality they lost something and after Deng Xiaoping came into power they like went back and they, it's again happening again where Chinese people are forced to learn too much ancient stuff and they feel like it's blocking them from being successful and so they hate it again, right? But a lot of ancient Chinese uh, thought is, is valuable. A lot of ancient thought is valuable. I mean, the, the dang, this is the thing, like when I was growing up, we live in a black neighborhood and one thing in the South, and one thing is that uh, black people actually read the prophetic books and think about what they mean, right? And think about, wow, this is like today or something like that. And that's very important to do that because uh, the in the in the reality of history, uh, prophets in Israel or whatever, their stuff got preserved because they said stuff was going to happen, and it ended up happening. People really, you know, uh, and you know they could have been crazy. But when Ezekiel was alive, they, they said he was crazy. Man. When he died, they were like, my God. They, they, they actually assembled the government, the Knesset, to reassemble everything possible. So the book of Ezekiel is actually a big assembly of the government got together after he died and tried to find out from everyone exactly what he said and write it down. That's one of the reasons why the book is so crazy and hard to understand. I'm sure a lot of people were just like, hey, this is a chance for me to get my you know my writing in history <laughs> yeah Ezekiel said this to me <laughs> it could have happened yeah yeah I, I know man I, I, I really get into that uh, um, and I, I I've had a uh, I have a another uh, uh, YouTube channel uh, David MCB1 uh, and, and I, I'm putting books up there now um, I don't have time, uh, like when I was very little, my mom would read books to me line by line. She would put her finger on the word and go across line by line by line, right? And what I'm doing now is I'm making these bots that read the book and the computer like goes line by line by line. And I'm hoping people can, can go back. I, I put uh, Josephus up there, the antiquities of the Jews. And I'm working on, I don't know if you know, but it's a it's an epic poem called the Mahabharat. And it's from India. And it's a it's a it's really a historical epic. And uh, it was, you know, the British Empire was like, this is all mythology. It's they totally tried to discourage studying it or whatever. But but actually uh, there's a lot of historical stuff in there. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm making <laughs> I made the whole, and I don't like the bot reading it. The uh, the, uh, uh, but I I did the whole Ramayan uh, in English on David MCB one, uh, and it's 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 not you know it it I've I've aspired to learn Sanskrit. I'm very fascinated uh, by Sanskrit, uh, uh, but. I, you know, it, it, take, it takes time. Uh, the uh, uh, and I, you know, I, I learned Chinese. I, I, I speak Chinese, and I got ten years of Chinese, but it's deteriorated. I don't have time to work on it now. But uh, the translation that I put up of the Ramayana, of course, is English, and it's it's not, you know, it's not that great. But it's it's better than nothing. <laughs> You know, and I, I, I think at least people can learn to rhyme and stuff. <laughs> Makes them rhyme. <coughs> but if you get into, okay, in the Mahabharata, uh, in the, at the end of the battle, uh, Arjuna, like, uh, uh, just shoots so many arrows into uh, Bhishma. And Bhishma's like lying there. And it starts, and, and the, the king is like, man, when he looks at all the death, he's like, man, I don't even, I'm, I gave up, man. I, I don't even want to look at this world. He's like, and they're like, you have to go to, to Bhishma 
he's on the battlefield and Bishma, of course, he's he's laying there in all these arrows, but he doesn't he doesn't it, they believe that he he could decide when he would die. So he said, I I'm gonna I'm completely in with all these arrows, right? So the the king goes now. If you go to that, it's called the Santi Parva. It's the part of the Mahabharat where uh, 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 Bhishma on the bed of arrows gives his dialogue, and um, it because of the manuscript culture, a lot of wisdom over the centuries. People were like when they copied and recopied the Santi Parva. People would add stuff if there was like some important wisdom or something like that. So that book, if you compare it, you know, the other volumes of the Mahabharata, you know, some of them are really short, right? but, but the dang, the Santi Parva is huge, right? Okay, well, you get in there and man, you see there's dialogue in there, this evidence that they knew of the Harappan civilization, right? Because they talk about the... Uh, now we know from satellite photography that this what happened with the Harappan civilization is the climate change. The Saraswati uh, River changed its course. There was huge famines and stuff like that. And uh, uh, the uh, in the dialogue with with uh, Bhishma, he's talking about stuff. And England has said none of, none of that is true. None of that has any history to it about it, right? But not only is he talking about the remembered history of uh of uh the uh the famines and the 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 climate change the the drying up of the saraswati river the changing of its course and stuff like that uh but he's talking about wisdom like how we made it you know how we got through it and and that these disasters have happened in the past and stuff like that and um um oh yeah 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 I have, this is the thing too, is uh, uh, because I was a computer guy and still am a a computer guy, is uh, there's a bunch of evidence of of things that happen in in the Ramayana and also in the Mahabharata. And and the reason why is because they had excellent mathematics and they were into astrology. So in the poem, right? (laughs) The poet will write down, well, they said this was a bad omen because Saturn was in retrograde and there was two comets or something like that. And they use computer science to go to go back, uh, these in- Indian scientists, the, uh, and it placed uh, the events of the Mahabharata actually when Indian people had always said that they were, that they took place. So uh, close to 5,000 years ago. Um so uh, the place of, uh, what is it, Ravana, that uh, it turned into a Buddhist, I think, uh, um, what is it, ha- Hanuman sets it on fire, remember, they, 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 ca- they catch him and his, his, his tail's on fire and he runs around and he sets the whole place on fire, uh, but um, I think that's a real place that that it actually in later times got turned into a Buddhist, uh, a Buddhist monastery. Yeah, it's in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And the Giants Causeway in the West, they call that Adams Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, 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 it's it's, the thing about it is, is like how many you're from India. You're like, well, yeah, of course, everybody knows this stuff. But how many how many Westerners know it? Very few. So that's one of the reasons why I put I'm putting the Mahabharat and the the Ramayan. I already put the Ramayan up uh, uh, on my David MCB One channel in English, and uh, and I, I uh, put in some other. Uh, I, I'm working on uh, what we have is uh, the Arabian Nights Arabic literature. Uh, post plague of Justinian, right? The great culture was was Arabic culture, and uh, um, the uh, uh, there's a book called the Thousand Nights, a thousand and one nights, the thousand nights and a night, and the best translation is the Burton translation, and it 
it's a receptacle of uh, of Arabic uh, uh, stories and tales and mythology and literature, and it just became a uh, a compendium where they they put all that all that stuff together in one spot. It's never been fully translated. It's so huge, but like these other big traditions, it contains a lot of thought, components of history and stuff. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, uh, this is a thing. I took a course on Alexander the Great, and Alexander the Great made it to India, right? <laughs> he made it. He made it to India, and it wasn't until he got there that he realized that he had it, at the outset he was just wipe out everybody, like uh, the Zoroastrianism uh, and and the Vedas. If you study linguistics. There's this uh, uh, religion that when Alexander the Great arrived, he tried to wipe it out. It was like a, a fire, a religion of fire, uh, and and it um, uh, that a great leader of that religion or was called Zoroaster. All right, now this is compared to the Vedas. That's late. The Vedas are much much earlier. Right, but get this, and I kid you not, don't take my word for it, you can go read it. If you if you look at prayers in the extent, uh, like the Zen Vesta and stuff like that, in their original language, it's almost exactly the same as the Vedic text. And what linguists tell us is that before the... the, uh, the the, the Vedas and Zoroastrianism have a common root, a prehistoric root, uh, 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 a, a lost language, and I think it's called Proto-Indo-European or something, uh, Proto-Indo-European language or whatever like that. And that's why, even though uh, this is some, you know, Iranian Persian stuff, much later than the, the Vedas, it's extant much later than the Vedas. It is a copy. There's Vedic prayers. It's exactly the same, word for word. It's almost just a different pronunciation of it. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, the stuff that they, they have. Um, uh, Chinese, too, and, and Taoism or whatever, they, they had some ancient tribes uh, that, that uh, studied medicine and stuff like that, and their, their chemistry knowledge was very advanced. Uh, and a lot of it was lost or misunderstood. The philosopher's stone uh, that the Arabs would, would read, that, that, they read gold. There was a Chinese character, gold, and it was like, but it was two characters that essentially mean fake gold, right? It's like artificial gold, how to produce this stuff by a chemical method. And they always thought, well, they could transmute base metals into gold, but but the Taoists were actually talking about this medicine stuff, and the the stuff they were trying to produce would prolong your life. And that's why it was called gold, because it, if you know, can make you you live longer. Of course, it's more valuable than gold or whatever. Om Ganga Namaha. I know. Um, Govinda, Govinda, Narayana, Bhuvana, Dara, Pranava, Swarupa, Paleya, Paleya, Partipurusha. Yeah, I love that stuff. I, I don't know. The roots go deep. Oh. And I would say, if you, if you know the Mahabharata and you know uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam, you know some of the Upanishads, you know the some of the Purana, like the Vishnu Purana. If you're familiar with some of that stuff, go back again and look at Christianity. <laughs> because in the very early time of Christianity, there was Gnosticism. And I, you know, people will get all mad and everything like that, but Gnosticism, uh, it looks like it may be connected to Hinduism because the universe was created out of desire by a, a lesser God. Like, so Brahma creates the universe out of desire. And so the universe is sort of 
uh, it's, it's imperfect and it goes into decline at the end of a Brahma day it's destroyed and then at a new Brahma day it will be created again there's just there's a cycle or whatever but uh, the universe in, in, in itself in the in the Kali Yuga the Kali Yuga is um, ultimately just going to get worse and worse and this is the thing that the the Gnostics were saying that the this material world was a, 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 a uh, that it was something valuable to it is delusory. Well, think about it. Shiva Maya, right? If if you if you if you read uh, uh, about um, Shiva Maya, the delusion of material existence is uh, every everything uh, uh, that that you experience in in the material world of your existence is Maya or Shiva's delusion and it's how Shiva God the true God limits power in you right as long as you're deluded uh, the stronger your delusion is the less manifestation of God's power that you have so what the early Christians were talking about was this knowledge gnosis that's why they call it Gnosticism that this was the truth that the real truth was that there's a real god which is like shiva right that that's detached from the material universe and that in the material universe we're in a state of imbalance and we're deluded right so this is my idea and of course it would take a lot of scholarship to prove it the the romans essentially wanted to sanitize the christian religion uh, and make it into a roman religion but somehow the this Jewish early Jewish religion, possibly during the period of Alexander the Great, when he had an integration policy, uh, uh, policy, an intermarriage or whatever, exchange, cultural exchange, that that's how these ideas managed to get into uh, Palestine and so on, because they're, they're profoundly parallel. They're very parallel to uh, ideas of Hinduism but the way Christianity has come out and I think it's a very disordered thing is that yeah there's an afterlife there's a heaven and this world is bad and it's going to get worse until the big destruction disaster happens in the book of Revelation right and this is a problem the Greeks thought about that when they opposed the early Christian religion, they were like, if everybody thinks that, they're not going to care about the world, and the world is all we got, right? We need to take care of it. <laughs> right, so, yeah. It's a, yeah. Mm. Um, I got to get squared away. Oh. Here go Walking Dead. I gotta get in here. I strongly, I, you know, I strongly think there's a connection between Christianity and Hinduism. Christians are so uneducated. They did a Pew Research study that uh, shows nobody knows less about religion than Catholics. <laughs> right? And, but the the Gnostic stuff, you need, yeah, if you, and, and uh, of course if you're Hindu, you've already got all those ideas. That's, that's part of it, you know, but the, uh, Christians need to realize the ancient roots. And there's there's been some, you know, talk about, oh, the Gospel of Judas, and they're just realizing stuff. But it's been there all along. Uh, the manuscripts are there. Thomas, the apostle. Um, <clears throat> Pravi Mohan. I will. I'm going to try to remember that. Um... um
in uh, Chennai, in India, there's a tomb that's supposed to be uh, the, the tomb of Doubting Thomas, uh, Thomas uh, the Apostle. And uh, they found uh, a, a Gospel of Thomas, a very ancient manuscript, uh, and it doesn't have a, a life narrative of Jesus at all. But it has things that, that were attributed to him that he was supposed to have said. And it's Gnostic. It is definitely Gnostic. And my position is is that Gnosticism uh, is, is talking about delusion, Shivamaya. Celtics forever? Don't tell me I'm going to be dead by Celtics forever, you stupid bot. Ouch! I'm about to be dead. I need to get on the underground. Oh no. See, we're not on our game right now. We need to get squared away. I am so honored by by you uh, helping me like you did. And I believe uh, in... You know, the idea of a true God, you know, the... And what is the true God? The true God is, is, is the real God, the only real God, right? Everything else is just delusion, Shivamaya. And I think a lot of people believe that and they just don't realize it. There was a great thing that I, I don't know how you feel about Gandhi, but but I've read a lot of Gandhi's writing. And one time he was following a, a, a funeral procession of a, of a, uh, um, a known atheist. And all the Hindus were like really infuriated. This guy, he was a, he, he was English and he was, he was a, he, a, a, an avowed atheist and, and Gandhi, you know, followed his and honored him and all this stuff. And Gandhi said, and I, I'm paraphrasing here. Um, oh, dang. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, uh, but um, he said this man his entire dedicated his entire life to truth and justice and love right he was already a man of God the true God you know because God is love God is justice God is truth right and and that that is the the very core essence of God beyond the delusion of Shivamaya, right? So that a person like this says, well, here's a word, an atheist, right? Oh, Lord. <laughs> that did not kill him. No, please don't kill me, trophies. I'll be good. Please don't. Oh, um, please don't flank me. Please don't. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Oh. Um. So, so that's me. That's me. I, I, I believe you know all all the things that make you do wrong, and limit uh, the the presence of God in your life and the and the power of God in your life. All those things are um, Maya, Shiva Maya, the delusion of material existence. You're limited by your languages, your vocabulary, your knowledge. All those things are phenomena of delusion and the limitation of the finite material self of, that you're in. And uh, yeah, I don't, you know, um, this is, this is a thing too, is uh, his, his Hinduism it, yeah, it was really in, in conflict. You know, some people are like, well, it was the perfect merging of uh, a different religious ideas, Jainism and stuff like that. But I, I will tell you just personally, um,
I've read 32 volumes of his papers, and that's only up to uh, that's only up to the 20s. And I've I've jumped around in the later versions, and I'm doing audio of uh, of his later papers uh, of World War II. I'm particularly interested in what was going on uh, in World War II. And so I jumped to volume 76 and 77 and 78, and I've been working on those. But the thing about it is, is Gandhi is also just a man, right? And uh, as he, during when he was in South Africa, he was like all about pro England, you know. So you could you could get some pundit on TV who's like, Gandhi was he loved the British Empire, and they can't get away from that for long because he changed, you know. But the thing about it is, is he's so complex and so involved in mankind or whatever that what his ideas and everything, it really dramatically changes over years of time. Uh, help me, help me, somebody. I, I done overextended my behind here. Um, and I don't agree with everything that he says too, but he, uh, but, but he also says some profound stuff. And one of the reasons why I'm from the South, uh, and we had the civil rights movement, uh, here, uh, and, um, uh, that's one of the things, well, we also had two things happen. We had the civil rights movement and we had the Krishna uh, uh, we had a Krishna temple uh, set up. Uh, those were, were influences, but the big influence of Gandhi was on Martin Luther King, uh, nonviolent, non-cooperation, right? And the, the Suadeshi and the, the, the Swaraj movement and the idea that we have to make ourselves independent Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, but for Sikhs, for example, you know, during Gandhi's time, there were, and I've read something about these incidents, there were Sikhs that, uh, or Sikhs uh, that uh, believed so much in what he said that they like stood in, they, they stood up in front of British soldiers with their swords in their hands and didn't do violence and the British shot them down. And so some six today are like, they still uh, remember what happened and, and really think, you know, very badly of, of Gandhi. Man. I need to back my behind up here. They need to come forward and take some hits from Walking Dead. Oh, no, Walking Dead. We need to stay back. These guys, they got to go around the corner and automatic kill. And we only got 30 seconds left. I almost want to commit suicide so I can load a different mech. I'm doing zero damage. <laughs> Oh, that's good. All right, let me get my Zephyr. Eight seconds. See, I ain't got that kind of firepower, boy. <sighs> oh, you mean Jalia? Uh, um. Ja Jaliwanabag, ja uh, how do you say that? Um, they had 1,200 rounds of machine gun, and the people did not even know they they had just arrived. Uh, um, they did not know that there were, there were order no orders to no assembly. Yeah. 
Uh, but, um, and they also, they said that nobody got killed. <laughs> And it, you can read that in, in Gandhi's papers. The people came to him one by one and, and they were subjected to all these degradations and stuff afterwards. And they, they tried to say that it would, you know, not many people were killed about and probably about a thousand people uh, ended up. If they did not die, then they, they died. After they were hit and they died a little bit later. Jallianwala Bag or whatever. Uh, uh, the... Um, but they had a big crackdown after that where they, they really subjected a lot of Indian people to like ritual, horrific uh, humiliation and degradation or whatever. Just totally uh, 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 awful and terrible the way that they were treated. And uh, people would, it's in Gandhi's papers because people would come to him and you know give a dialogue. This is what happened. This was the person one by one every person that was subjected to humiliation and degradation and these awful things that were done you know they recorded it Yeah, and it, yeah, I say a, th a thousand or under a thousand, but it could have been more than a thousand. They fired 1,200 rounds because the, they know they know how much ammunition the guy had, supposedly. Well, you know, yeah. I guess you don't know, really. There's no, there's no telling uh, how much ammunition he had. Officially, he was supposed to have something like 1,200 rounds, and they knew it couldn't have been more than that. But the Brit, you know, of course, the the British would take the angle. Uh, oh, what have I got? I got the. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, that happened yesterday. This guy got me on the. And I, I forgot this morning when I got on because so many things went wrong. I hope, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my daughter was eyeing that. She loved the little avatars. Uh, and and the, there's a guy I know, Traintastic, that I also met on here. And he was trying to turn me on in these games. Uh, he, he, he was showing me this thing, uh, what is it, cross out? Is 12 energy bad? I'm trying to be better. Three thousand seven hundred fifty eight coins is well, how much that is, and I saved it. I saved it up. You can watch all my streams. I did not pay a dang cent. And with my dang implants and stuff. Uh, It's a lot of HP. <laughs> 73,000. Oops. Thank you. <laughs> Needed that. Huh. Right. Cramp for space there. And I, I tell people, uh, like, I, 
I have uh, ADHD, and and one of the the like uh, the things that you your mind really a lot of people would say you're distracted and stuff like that. But really, if you just chill out, you're just you, your brain is just I don't know it's more networked. Um, but for me to do better at a, at a game, and I've never done this before. Now, yeah, for me to be better at a game, I, ca I kind of have to get focusing on one thing. So I got the MD because my daughter wanted me to. And I just kept focusing on that, you know, and I was like, well, let me try to uh, try to get all the. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The the, thi the 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 thing is 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 you need to make since your brain like uh, kind of by most people's standards a uh, uh, ADHD brain is like distracted or whatever your mind is going places it's not supposed to go but um, to to be effective you have to make the uh, the universe of a small thing become bigger large enough. To really absorb you so for example I take the 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 MD get out get on the cover okay he saw the timer going now that's why he was just standing <coughs> um yeah so I, I do better if I get one robot and just work on that and work on it work on it work on it not, not work on anything else focus on anything else and just uh, but it's easy for me to go oh well I'm neglecting my Lancer I'm neglecting this I'm neglecting that uh, <clears throat> thanks <laughs> trying to be better <laughs> but what I what I'm really proud of is if I can totally uh, uh, play and carry on a complete conversation <laughs> at the same time when I was little, you know, my mom was like, you can't watch uh, TV and listen to the record player and do your coloring book and your homework and read a book at the same time. <laughs> Cannot do that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what would happen if I did? Let me try it. <laughs> Am I going to explosionationalize behind it? <laughs> But I was talking uh, er earlier uh, to, to Ankurgar. It's like uh, first time I read the Mahabharat, I couldn't I couldn't get it through the third volume. Too many, and it's it's like you got to face the fact that if you're going to read the Mahabharat, there's going to be all kind of uh, Sanskrit you're not going to understand. It just doesn't translate into English, so they just leave it. All the names too, people's names mean things, you know, and and. and if you go in to read the Mahabharat and, and you're thinking, well, I got to understand every word, you're never going to read it. You, you need to just go ahead and read it because it's simple things. Ow! Bad, bad boy. Messed up there. Okay. Where do I want to be? I want to be right there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, because I mean, you know, the Mahabharat really, if you can break it down to a very simple story, you know, it's like the king. The idea is that if you have a monarchy, if you have a king, right, any flaw of the king is is a terrible disaster, right? The king has to be so perfected. Right, and that's what happens in the Mahabharata. Is the king slips and he gambles, and he, and 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 just this huge disaster happens, and there's no escaping it. They have to go back. The the he loses the kingdom. They go into exile, and he has to come back from exile. 
and it's it's really about a war over uh, uh, a, monar a monarchy and Hastapanor and the uh, and the recovery of of that monarchy from a corrupt uh, kingdom. The people that took it over were corrupt. They cheated on the gambling, right? And they were they were evil. And the small evil gave power to the lesser evil, right? Oh no. Stop shooting at me. Mm. Uh, too little, too late. That's what you call that. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh, he all the way over there and about to get killed again. And here I am. Wax and philosophic. There you go. Stupid bot. Very botesque. <laughs> Come on, walk in there and get your rejuvenization allization systems. Uh, <laughs> like two sixes. Um, Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I need to sit down. What, you know, the, there's a big table that somebody made with all the, the Mecarina, uh, the data of everything. You know, I need to sit down and uh, get organized and try to figure out uh, what the best configurations are instead of just sitting there and doing nothing. Uh, I know that kill shot is nappy. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I have not been playing with it. And it's, we own a dang uh, thing. It's my only one with a guided weapon. But like I said, the, the very few people I think pay the 3,750 to upgrade to MD, right? And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and top out that was slow reaction time right there. Huh? Oh, he missed. <laughs> well, small Ollie, you just go ahead and sit right there. You can get out of the way if you want to. Good. Ouch! Sorry. Mm. I'm walking there getting my radius. There you go. Don't waste it. <laughs> that was flailing. <laughs> there you go. Like, like me leaning is going to do something. 
Turkey. Oh, I'm in trouble now. I love it when I make it all the way with just my MD. You can, man, the, my stream, I stream every single game I play. Well, almost 99.999%. Um, and you can go back and see me with the MD the first time. Pop, bam, pop, bam, pop, bam. It's like I can't even play this. Ouch. Five to zero. <laughs> I know, man. He's Walking Dead is good with that Panther. Yeah, yeah, but we'll we definitely need to play together. Great, great meeting you. Um, uh, always, always glad to uh, meet somebody that you know knows a little bit of something about d culture and stuff. The United States is in crisis because people don't know anything about history. I mean, there's that hyper that documentary they made up or, or made up. <laughs> It's a documentary, a new documentary called Hypernormalization. And the, the idea of the documentary is that the United States ba basically made up some stories about what the problems are in the world. And everybody trying, based on the lie that they made up, everybody's trying to solve. And it's like, if you made up a story, hyper hyper normalization is what the documentary is called. It's like the reason we can't solve Syria and, and Iran and all this stuff is because people are like analyzing a fake story that they made up. Dang you. And trying to solve something, it's not Thank you. Oh. oh, hell. Walking Dead, please don't die. Oh, 
Uh, the huge stupid bot. Touche. Mm. Ooh, he already did. That's a bot right there that launches a grenade launcher or something from underneath the overhang. <laughs> Very bot. Like, oh! Well. Oh! He got me. Touche. I mean, I'm, I'm not focused. Let me get my head back on straight. Blink. Kill. There you go. That's all I need. Oh, he way behind. the same spot you came before Tati Yoshi I want to tell me what to do, man. I, uh, yeah, I'd like to get everybody in all at the same time. <laughs> what should I set up? Like a five versus five? If I do a five versus five, could y'all come in? Salanda, Lisby friends. <sighs> Good job. Oh, here she comes. Dang you.
Okay. Turkeys. Oh. Stupid arc torrent. Close quarters, my butt. I really didn't, I forgot that that was not undercover. Yeah, I was talking earlier about Gandhi. I, I, you know, man, what a uh, 98 volumes of papers he's got. And you gotta, you can't just read Gandhi because it's like his papers is all the people that are writing to him right? and, and disputing with him and, and all, all that stuff like that. And he changes as a person and the things that he believes and everything. By volume 30, he's like, you cannot compare him to the man that he was when he was a barrister in, the, in South Africa. He's a different person. I mean, there's elements. Dang it. It's all my fault. Can do what's wrong with you? He almost killed him. No, walking dead, man. You what? 
he mad or something? <gasps> Ow! <laughs> oh god! Stupid. Come on. Come on. Try. Got some overtime. <laughs> I hear you. Oh, he coming over here. Help, help, help. What is that he's down there with? <clears throat> Put javelin racks on the MD. <laughs> Need some javelin rack skills, right? Me. <laughs> Maybe I'll try it.
Thank you. Stop! Oh well. That didn't do much. I'm out. My kill shot ain't nothing. <clears throat> I need to get out for a minute here and go check on Walking Dead. I'm gonna die in here.
Dang. No. Dang you. Close for comfort.
Oh. Too little, too late. that happens man every time I'm thinking I'm close enough to be undercover but I'm not live and learn I almost got away. I did get away.
come. Oh, that taser was going all the way across. Got that damn 45 meter implant. Oh, that stevedore is a rascal. Now, where shall I change to my woman in her costume? Ha, ah, there's a convenient phone booth. Oh, man, this is calls. Somebody's left a baby. Hey! CPL is zero, so... Can a person change into a costume in a convenient phone booth without being interrupted? Oh, super duper man's in that phone booth. I better find another.
killing us. Good, finally somebody killed that guy. Let me just look at the relish his wreckage here for a minute. Close. Why does that not surprise me? <clears throat>
I had better not step out right now. Ah, uh, I just need a. Yeah, let, let, let me see. Right now. repairing
mad. Leads, leads the fight to conserve energy. Oh, I need a, need a break. This is like so many. All these files just messed up. And this is not the first time. All winners number five. Sorry about the break there. I, I just needed to chill for a minute. What is this guy doing?
sorry. Some rude guy. Ah, stop. Lob, slob. That's what you is. Help! on the board with a little MD. I don't know why my stream is lagging so bad. But man, you feeling bad. I'm gonna leave somewhere else. <sighs> and I, I really need to
el chingo.
call it the assistant. Someone call my assistant. <laughs> Love it. Andale, le, le, le. Oh, stupid.
still have a minute. The bottom corner is where I would like to be.
11,000. I guess that's kind of strong. I'm sorry, man.
Finally, I get a little bit of respect. Marilyn, dang. I'm playing lousy. I need to give up. Man. It's time to take a rest. Oh, I'm out of tickets too. So, it's about that time.